And last week, End Insecurity and Secure North began trending on social media platform Twitter as protesters in some of the biggest cities in the northern parts of Nigeria, such as Kaduna, Kano and Zamfara, joined in the ongoing wave of protests rocking the country. It will be recalled that while the decade-long Boko Haram crisis has displaced and killed many in the North East, the North uh, East keeps battling what the government of the day continues to refer to as farmers' headers' clashes, while the Northwest is still in the throes of cross-border banditry. For a discussion around this development, we are now being joined from Maiduguri, the capital of Borno State, by Professor Ibrahim Waziri, a professor of social and economic history and director of Trans-Saharan Studies at the University of Maiduguri. Welcome to the program, Professor. Many thanks for joining us today on Newsday. Let's get your reaction, Professor, to the ongoing protests in northern Nigeria, which have transcended or seem to have transcended from end SARS to end, to end insecurity and uh, secure north. What's your take on this? Well, um, good, good afternoon. Uh, the issue is that we are faced with uh, the bubbles, which uh, a lot of things brought about in Nigeria today. It's unfortunate that uh, the use are carrying the palaka and they are carrying the issue forward in an unorganized manner. We expect Nigerian youth at this stage to have been better organized. Because whatever is happening today in this country is going to impact on their future. And they are going to be the inheritors of future Nigeria. In whatsoever shape it takes in the future. So we need a better organized youth focusing their ideas and then organizing themselves in a civil manner whereby they can protect not only the issue who they want to forward to the leadership and elders of this country, but also who which they themselves need to articulate and utilize for their future use. Because what is happening today I am afraid to, see, to say that it is not what we expect of Nigerian youth when they want to take up issues. It should be taken in such a way that they will show themselves as mature Nigerians, as the product of Nigeria in which they themselves want to a better Nigeria. I doubt very much if what is happening today uh, is encouraging, agreed, that they are aggrieved. But all, almost every sector of Nigeria is now agreed, including the leadership. The leadership are now in hot seat or on hot seat because they have never expected what they are finding now, what has they seen now to happen in Nigeria. Let us go back and cast our mind. After the election, it was a battle in the courts. After the battle, it was still a battle to form a stable government. After the battle to form a state government, it's a battle to really articulate the policies of government. And in okay, Professor. In city, it has organized itself. Was the executive? Okay. Yes. Mm. Yes, I'm okay. listening. Okay, we lost connection with you for a bit there. But let me ask you because you have just said that the Nigerian youths are immature because they decided to protest, uh, uh, to bring no, 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 no. to no, no, no. the awareness of the government the brutality they face in the hands of policemen and women that are supposed to be protecting them. How else do you think that they could have gone about this in a matured way in your own words? Please, uh, point of correction. I didn't say they're immature. I yep. said the way mm -hmm. the protest is being organized, it shows a certain degree of immaturity of strategic organization. Because you see, when you want to change a system, you must provide something which is better. To show yourself that you have the ability to carry through. Look, the youth can organize themselves and come and face the leadership. They should have a form of structure of leadership. They should have a form of discipline in organizing the strike itself. It's so easy. I participated in a lot of student demonstrations since when I was a student. But we had leaders. 
who organized this demonstration and they prevented anybody from preventing cars to pass by or from attacking anybody. We go straight to government house and we forced the government or the leadership of the government at that time to address us. And then we dispersed our hostages. So I believe Nigerian youths are mature enough to do that. Since they have already identified the brutality of the police and all the country is behind them, let them respect the country, respect themselves, organize themselves not to allow miscreants and others to divert attention from other bestial matters. This is a national issue which they are champion. And they have the right to do it, but they should do it well in such a way that they will be beneficiaries and the, country, the, the society will benefit from them. But what we are seeing is making people to feel afraid. What next? It doesn't seem as we are facing a better situation than the one we are living. This is not good. This is what I'm saying. Okay, um, Professor, thank, thank you uh, for your point of view there. Um, I just wanted to ask you, though, because points of correction, what you actually did say is that the youths should yes. present themselves in a mature manner. And um, I, I, I mean, I beg to differ, but it's not my place to give my opinion on yes. this and how the youths have presented themselves. But I will bring your attention to the fact that there are a lot of youths that I have seen on okay. social media talking about next steps for the protests, how to move forward. It's interesting to see the amount of fear being built. I mean, we're only a couple days into the protest. Let's not talk about how long protests lasted in a place like Hong Kong. But anyway, Professor, you mentioned yes. that uh, you mentioned the mobilization of thugs that we're seeing, and I'd actually like to touch on that and bring that up. How do you react to what we are seeing in places like Edo State, in places like the federal capital territory, even here in Lagos State, and I'm sure as well in parts of the north that you can you can tell us about? What's it, what, what is your reaction to the mobilization of armed thugs to hijack peaceful protests? It's unfortunate. This is what we are, we are against. Because, uh, you see, when you allow the youth to be led by a group who are going to create mayhem and chaos, then the whole idea of bringing a more dialogue-based and protest-organized, purposeful protest, positive process-organized society to be hijacked. And the issue bedeviling this country is lack of inclusive governance. And we want the youth to be included in governance. But when the youth are now allowed themselves to be led by people who are not really, really focused on the issues at stake, and they have a vision of the future of what they want their society to be, then the, 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 the terrible thing that will happen is chaos. And when the chaos happens, it affects almost everything and everybody, including them. And this is what we don't want. We don't want to lose our youth. We don't want to lose the the little fees we have now, we want people to be cushioned in such a way that they can be able to contribute to the dialogue going on in this country, to be point to the leadership. It seems to be a raging perception that the North is immune to the cancer of police brutality. And I was asking you, do you agree? Is this a national problem and a national call by the Nigerian youth? Is the country speaking with you one the voice? Issue no, it is. But you see, the problem is our experiences are a bit different. The North has faced violence since the 1966 coup, and then subsequently it has also been involved in violence in the Nigerian Civil War. And the, all the assassinations and all the things during military coups and counter coups and so on are faced by the North. And currently, the issue of Boko Haram and the hardest farmers crisis, kidnapping and so on, has become endemic in the North. So we are already victims of the high level of violence going on in this country. For example, in Borno State, where I am now, the SARS, those SARS who are attached to the governor, lost a lot of their members protecting the governor when he was attacked by Boko Haram. So you see, the narrative is different. And of course, some people face violence, both from the military and we do seem to have lost connection there with Professor Ibrahim Waziri. And I guess we'll also bring that conversation to a close because we don't have much time left.